Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Tommy DeVito, the giant. Big win versus the Patriots. Taking advantage of his opportunity. Love to see it. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> So before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate it. As for this video, let's get into it. Tommy DeVito making his inaugural appearance on the Quarterback School, beating Bill Belichick at home, working the over here. Nothing like a little post over in combo from Dable. Nice job. I thought Tommy DeVito... Did a really nice job here manufacturing some big chunk plays in some weather. Five-step drop, beautiful pass protection, driving the ball down the field. You know, obviously would love to throw it maybe a tick earlier so you're not catching it and going out of bounds here. But this is one of those things I just think of. When I think of Brian Dable, I think of we're running overs. And right here we're going to pair it with a post. So here's where the ball ends up going, up and across. And again, You'd love to throw that thing here as opposed to all the way on the sideline. But again, one of those things, if it wasn't there, so no to the over, you got that in working across with that Miami motion. So just a really nice job. Again, world-class pass protection as well. Love to see it. Great job from Tommy here being patient, ripping that thing in here. I'm going to do my absolute best to not give you my Jersey accent over the course of this thing, but that's just a really nice job. And again, you know, you'd love to just see it a tick earlier, throw it there, as opposed to that extra hitch, and now that ball is a catch and out of bounds, as opposed to a catch and pump return right. Regardless, I thought my favorite part from watching this film was just the big plays that showed up. And there were some opportunities for some even some more. But right here, beautiful pass protection. They can't get home. He's able to drive that thing down the field again. it. It flies on him a little bit. You'd love to throw a little bit more of a fastball and get that thing up and down closer to the bottom of the numbers as opposed to the sideline, but still big chunk. Next one here, another big chunk. This time down the sideline at the bottom, we're going to hit that little honey hole shot. We're going to catch the cloud corner kind of peeking inside. Beautiful ball from DeVito. Again, the aggressiveness down the field. First of all, the fact that we're dialing up these shots. Gets the ball out on time in rhythm. That's a beautiful throw. It really is. You can see here, I'll snap it. I'll stop it right at the snap. This cloud corner at the bottom. So we're going to get split field coverage. So there's the safeties. Here's that cloud corner at the bottom. That just means he's the flat defender. He's going to have his eyes just a little bit inside. He's thinking, oh, I'm going to come up here and, and try to get this little choice or option to the back. Your boy TD says, thank you very much. I'll take the honey hole shot down the sideline, and he throws a strike. This is not an easy throw. Now it's to the boundary of the short side, but the ball comes out on time, no hitch. I mean, that's beautiful. This is a big-time throw. You add some weather. Look at him hit his back foot. That ball's coming up, and it's a beautiful throw up on his face. Just an outstanding job. This is really cool. You see a guy get his moment. Against one of, if not the best coach of all time. Now, certainly they're not having the greatest year or few years, but that's pretty awesome. Right in front of Belichick. <laughs> Love to see it. Boom. Awesome. Next one here, another opportunity for a little bit of a mini chunk up top. We're going to try to hit the slot up top of what I'm used to calling a bluff wheel. It's going to be post bluff wheel. We're going to fake the swing screen and try to rip that same area of the defense. So that kind of whole shot down the sideline. Now, it's not the exact same look by any means, but I think that this throw is there. It looks like it hits him damn near in the crotch. We got to catch that ball. We got to help our guy. So what is this play? We're going to do what I'm used to calling this little orbit motion. All that means is we're going around and orbiting around the quarterback. You're welcome for that. So we're up and around, and then we're faking the screen here. So we're trying to get this. So we want this to look like we're coming out here and blocking. On the outside, we're going to run a post. It's essentially a glorified clear. And then we're really trying to get this bluff wheel right here. 
Now, I personally, this is just my preference, I would prefer a little bit more of a bluff. And the reason you want a bluff is not just to get this player, this flat defender, to kind of trigger and think he's going to go make the tackle. That happens. What you're really trying to do here is understand the spacing of this concept and let that post clear go so that it takes the corner with you. So if you go too quick here on the bluff wheel, you're essentially tailpiping the post. So that post is going to go too. And this corner can kind of feather and play both. He's kind of tight enough where you've got to drill this. And that's kind of what happens. At the end of the day, to me, this is still a good enough throw. This is a ball we got to catch. No. You can see again, watch that bluff by the slot up top. Bluff the flat defender and up. See how close he is to the post? That's not the spacing you're looking for. So now that corner can kind of slow play it, and he's kind of tweenering you. And again, the throw that none of that is on Tommy DeVito. Pump, throw it on time, drive it again to the wide side outside the numbers. You know, looks like it hits us right where it counts. And the jelly beans. You seen that new movie, Leo? It's pretty good. Watch that motion here. Oh. Uh, Again, I like the fact that he kind of stays in rhythm through the shrug, keeps that base, and the ball's out. It's a one hitch. So rhythm, uh-uh, hitch, go. And again, I mean, that looks like it hits us pretty good. We got to catch that ball. Next one here, third and seven. One of my least favorite plays, a little sprint right. It's not true sprint right option. Uh, if it's possible, it might even be a worse iteration of it. We're going to essentially get this ball tipped down. It never has a chance. Even if the guy catches it, I'm not sure it's going to get a first down. It's third and seven. And so, again, the, the only positive here for me with these types of plays is we're moving the launch point. Okay. But you cut the field in half. What they're doing here, scheme-wise here, is it's third and seven. Well, we're running like a six-yard quick out. So even if we catch this, there's a pretty good, strong likelihood that it's still going to be a fourth and short. Now, normally, I would say you wouldn't want to run the guy into the flat here on like the kind of bastard cousin of sprint right option of the guy who's inside and have the guy who's the number one go behind him. So you, the first guy doesn't usually run the flat. It's usually you use the first guy as a clear where he kind of goes to the seven or the corner, and then the second guy kind of gets in his tailpipe and runs out of it. This is just like, hey, just go up there and run a quick out, and then we'll go inside. Who knows what we're supposed to do? We get jacked. And the edge player right here who thinks he's going to get cracked with this motion, so he's thinking he's going to get cracked. His antenna's up. He doesn't get cracked, and now he's just in the lane to put his paws up and block this little quick out. I mean, it's just one of those plays where it's high school hairy. Like, this is the stuff you see, you know, Friday night, 4 o'clock for the JV game. Maybe Thursday, where you're from. Monday. It's just, we, we got better stuff than this. I, I don't care what string quarterback it is. You know, middle of the field, sprint right. I mean, look at three. That's just too easy of a play for three. It's three on three crime out there. There's nowhere for him to go with the ball. What do you want him to do? You want him to throw a touch pass here? You you I don't know if anybody could throw a touch pass from here. Over three, right there. I mean, he's 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 going to be able to put his paw up on that. You're already outside the numbers. This guy's running downhill. Who knows what's going on back here? I mean, for who, for what? What are we What are we doing? Give us a chance. Third and seven? I guess if you're going to catch it and go for it on fourth down. Next one here, third nine. I thought this was a bummer miss. I thought he had the number two up top on what I'm going to call the crosser. I think it's there. It looks like that's right where you would be in the progression at the top of the drop especially versus man, you got that runaway opportunity, you're protected well enough, you're getting chips, and how many hitches do you get at the top? One, you know, one and run, maybe he could shuffle up there, you'd love 31 maybe to give us a little bit of a presence. Tough right there, and again, I mean, nice escapability, get something positive out of it, but it's not enough. You know, it's one of those things where you're not going to get runaway opportunities like that very often. <laughs> I mean, we are gapping people right here. This is about as open as you'll see on a third down where you're, you know, we're just going to get up and run over here and we're just running away from people. Like he, he is being left in the dust here. The guy over the top, this guy is down on the tight end. So you've got all this space. 
And again, I'm just assuming that this read is probably, you know, check out what's going on over here, maybe one, two, and then the in coming to you when all these things go kind of right to left. This doesn't look like a clear to me. A more clear, clear path would be more vertical to keep that safety off and then work that dagger. So that it doesn't look like a clear. It looks like we're trying to win on the crosser or the over. It's there. We got to throw this. We've already hit a big crosser early in the game. You know, again, we don't have to know the read to say that. <laughs> that's a lot of space. And even if for some reason, say the crosser is a clear, that in up top, that's open. We got to throw that for a first down. But man, that crosser is a brutal miss. That's a bummer. So it's one of those things where, yeah, we're winning. It's awesome. It's a, it's a great story, no doubt, on many levels. But you turn on the film, and it could be even better. I mean, right there, hit that back foot, up throw, as opposed to up run, or just hit that back foot and throw it. You're going to get hit. Whew. All right. Try again. Next one here, third and eight. We're going to get Tommy at the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's alerting, checking, killing, cutting, whatever you want to call this thing. We're going to get to shallow cross, and that shallow cross just wide ass open. Make somebody miss, get a first down. So just a beautiful job. This is old school shallow cross paired with post wheel to our left here. But you can see the operation for DeVito here. He's alerting whatever he needs. They're protected. He's able to go through it. The shallow's coming right to you. I thought he might have a chance at the post. You know, every team does these things with shallow cross a little bit different. And what I mean by that is some teams refer to them as alerts. Some make them live for certain coverages. Now, where the ball ends up going here, this is the shallow element for me. Versus man, you want to run away. Versus zone, you can kind of settle up outside the tackle box. It's almost always paired with that deep hook. So this is shallow cross, in my opinion, with usually a check like this. Now, when you run it at a three-by-one, you got a lot of different options. Right here, they're going to go post, wheel. And with this rotation, or whatever this is defensively, where we're kind of coming this way, this sure looks like it potentially is a throw. So if you were to kind of alert this thing, you'd have the shallow cross coming right to you versus man coverage. And that's exactly what happens. The guy who's covering the shallow here as we run all the way across, he actually runs around the hook. So this hook ends up operating as like a little deep pick or rub. You got no chance. That's why there's so much space out there. Again, just a really nice call, a simple call, but it gives you a lot of different answers, especially at a three by one. And again, any call is a good call when no one's around the guy you're throwing to by 10 yards. Beautiful job throwing underneath the sticks. Let your guys work in space and go get a first down. That's a great job. It's just professional quarterbacking right there. Getting the play that you want. Be protected. Communicate it at the line of scrimmage. Get the ball snapped. Get the ball out on time. One hitch. Right on him. Make somebody miss. First down. Let's go. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already. Please like. Subscribe. Hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. You get even more Quarterback School content over there. I'm really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. All sorts of nuanced, detailed depth about not only the quarterback position, but high-level offense and defensive football. So hop over there and become a member. We also have quarterback school courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have courses on RPOs, tempos, pass protection, the best-selling courses, how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you, so hop over there and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources. Those are linked in the video description as well. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third and 10, balls on the twelve. We're going to throw the short in up top to the number one for a touchdown. Now, this is a great blitz call. If you think you're catching pressure down here, they're in one by three nub. The number three is running a corner. The one and the two are running short ends. DeVito does a nice job working inside out. Again, get it to your guy in space. Miss tackle. Roll up on a security guard. Touchdown. Just a really nice job here from DeVito. Watch how quickly he gets it out. Boom. Hit the back foot. All his cleats in the ground. Quick, decisive. Now, it's not a world beater throw. Okay, don't get it twisted. Watch out. But he's playing within the structure of the offense. He's operating at a high level. He's not holding on to the ball. And again, a lot of teams play this play. Corner. Short in. Short in. 
Okay, versus certain looks, you'll be trying to get the ball to the corner. And then other, everything other than that is usually just reading this thing one to two. And again, if that one is covered, that usually means that it's going to operate. So if someone covers this short in, we get this kind of like attached to it, matched to it, it usually creates a big void for this outside in. You make one guy miss, and it's a race to the pylon. Again, just a really clean, simple play, but executed at a high level, get the ball out quickly, good things happen. And again, I just like the operation of it. It looks competent. Okay, overcoming some weather as well. You can see him go one to two, not forcing the ball. Get off me with a straight arm and watch out. <laughs> that guy's locked into the crowd. Good for you. You know, I really like the way that he plays on his back foot. Boom. Now, could he be lined up a little bit more? Maybe. You know, who knows where he's looking, whether he's looking to the corner or the short end. doesn't really matter. But you can see him go one to two, be really decisive, get off me, touchdown. Next one here, third and 16. By far my favorite throw of the game. Beautiful pocket movement. We're going to work that little seven up, down out and go down here to the bottom. Awesome throw. Big chunk. Not a lot of room to drop that thing in, and it is a big, big play. <laughs> Converting third and 16, just backbreaker to the defense. Look at the pocket movement, though. Ho -ho! I mean, this is it, right? Up in the pocket. Boom. Reset. Throw. Drop a dime down the side hash. That is outstanding. Right in front of their bench. Love to see it. So what is the route? I'm used to calling this just like a little seven up. It's just an old school down out and go. You're going out and then going down the sideline. Now, this is not a great drawing because it doesn't show the exact sideline. But we're running this thing down the side hash. There's not a lot of space down here. And again, quarterback-wise, the thing that's outstanding is he resets up in the pocket. He doesn't bail. He doesn't flush. He doesn't run. He gets up, resets his feet, and drives the ball down the field. This is a hell of a play. This is outstanding. This creates controversy. <laughs> These types of throws. It's a big, big-time third-down conversion. That is a hell of a throw. It is outstanding pocket movement. And then it's the ability to deliver it down the field. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> nice pass pro to be able to hold up for us there. Up, up, reset. And look at, I mean, again, see him running down the side hash. There's not a lot of window to drop that thing in. Beautiful throw. Big, big chunk. Hell yeah. Next one here. This is a very uh, welcome to the NFL moment. You hope that this happens in like the offseason mini camp or something. We're going to be running the ball. He's going to bring the slot over, thinking he's going to block the DB type to the bottom. They're going to check the coverage, go to too deep, and then the guy that he should have been blocking on the front side almost blows up the play, and now we're in a TFL in the fetal position. <laughs> so there's a lot of moving parts here. You can see him move this wide receiver over. Hey, you come over. You got 23. You're blocking 23. Well, who's blocking 27? Who's blocking 27? Uh, oh, God. Oh, uh, yeah. Boom. <laughs> So there's a lot on the plate of quarterbacks. And what I'm saying right here is in this run game, we've got six in the run blocking unit. They've got seven in the box. There's six. Here's that plus one, the DB type. This guy's the quarterbacks. So what he does is he says, oh, I got an extra guy. I got something in my toolkit. Come over here and you block him. The Patriots say, LOL, that's funny. I'm going to drop back and play half field, and we're going to pressure the nickel or the star off this side, and he's going to be unblocked. Thank goodness Tommy sees it. So he says, hey, Saquon, I'm not going to do that to you. I'll keep it, and I'll take, the, take it for you. So just a lot of moving parts here. Again, this happens to everybody. You just hope that it doesn't happen against Bill Belichick in week 12. Again, you can see the operation of it. So DeVito is pointing. Hey, you got 23. Come over here, dig him out for us. We're running the ball. 27 is like, oh, what? Check, check. Okay, I'm going. Now we're in. And then the guy, he comes over to block, goes into the half field. That's a bad feeling. <laughs> now, the good part about it is he didn't make a bad play a disaster. He allowed a bad play to be a bad play. And that's a redeeming quality, in my opinion, for quarterbacks. You can see him pointing out, you got 23, you got 23, here comes 27. Oh, damn. My bad. Bummer. <laughs> Next one here. This was a weird sack. It looks like he's going from one by three nub bunch to two by two condensed, trying to throw the quick out up top. No, the corner's there, the check down's there, everything up top is there. And somehow we get sacked. So this is definitely the stuff you don't want on your film. 
it's one of those things where he's looking to the left. We don't have to know the read. Okay, You can see his helmet stripe is looking to the left right there. Everything is open to the left. Now, he's probably trying to throw the quick out right there. It's there. He could throw that. If he doesn't like that, throw it to Barkley on the check down right there. It's there. If you were to work 82 on the corner, he's mailboxing you for a big play. It's there. Instead, our eyes go down. So it looks like we go quick out, no, panic, yes, sack, bad. So just one of those things you immediately have to learn from. This is one of those plays that this looks like we're out of sorts. And again, what this is, is motioning across. Is that there? I think it is. This is definitely there. If he was looking there, I'm not saying he is. And then if you were going to go to the check down and you didn't like it, so if you were one here, didn't like it, just come right here. Check down right in front of your face to the best player on the field. That's a good play. You can't just take these hold on to the ball panic sacks. So up top, quick out. It's there, it's there right? Look at 17, open. How about the tight end? Mailbox. How about the check down up top? Again, everybody's open. Read doesn't matter. Can't take this sack. This looks like we're out of sorts, like we don't belong. And I think there are throws that definitely show that we do belong. So these are the types of plays that you just don't see guys in the league that stick around very long making very often. So you make it once, you learn from it, never again. Next one here. One of my least favorite concepts. Put it in the book. We're going to go stick up top, spacing to the bottom. Nobody likes spacing versus match coverage. It just doesn't give you any opportunities for winners. It looks like we almost get a fumble there at the end as well. We're trying to work left to right all the way across the field. So flat, stick, sit, hitch, no, one, two, three, four, nothing there. Just get down, protect yourself, hold on to the ball. You know, whether he was down or loose, it doesn't really matter. I personally, I just, I really, really dislike this concept. And again, I will draw it and then I'll tell you why I dislike it. So here's the stick element. That's a stick and this is the flat. That's kind of universal stick. On the back side, we're going to get the sit with the hitch and then the check down. Okay, so that that this is the stick side. This is the spacing side. And if you can read my writing. There is no man answer here. That's the first part. Okay, so I don't I think of stick as like a pretty zone centric, sit zone centric, hitch backside pivot definitely zone centric. And what I mean by that is if it's man coverage or people are matching to these, these are static routes. People are just attached to them. There's nothing there. So this is why these types of things don't work for me. Better. What would be okay? Smart ass. What would be a better way to do this? All right. Well, if you love stick, okay, let's say you love stick. Well, then we need to have some sort of man options on the back. So you can go maybe sit here if you want, and then let's go, how about we go like return or loop here? Or how about we do the opposite? How about we go in here with return or loop this way? These are man answers. This is not in reinventing football, y'all. This is just having the capacity to have zone and man answers on the same concept. So I'm going to let this thing play, and you're going to see what happens, what it feels like to have a zone concept versus man or match. Where do you want him to go? <laughs> Fucking A, man. Ear muffs me. I mean, the guy down here to the bottom, this is definitely a penalty, but he's still covered up. I mean, maybe if he doesn't get deboed there, he'd be open on the hitch on the backside. But that's one, two, three, four across the board. Nothing's there. Got to run. That's a bad feeling. Protect the ball. Protect yourself. Just give I And again, I get it. Looks like we're dealing with some weather with all the slickers in the stands. But man, that is a rough concept to operate for any quarterback. Next one, third and 15. Now, this is a very much, uh, we need to protect the field position. We're going to throw a perimeter screen. We throw a sinker, you know, off the plate, brush back. Damn near TFL, probably a TFL on a perimeter screen, all bad. I'm not saying that this throw is easy, easy ever, let alone in the weather. Okay, so I get that part of it. And we got to make a better throw. <laughs> okay, so here's that little quick now or tunnel screen. We're going to come out here, block MDM. We're going to step down and come out and try to help on the in the alley. We're getting somebody out. We're getting somebody back on the peaker. And again, the hard part here, and it's much harder to your right than to your left, is because you've got to flip your hips all the way around. So he goes from right foot stagger, left foot back, to now he's going to have to flip all the way around to right foot back, 
left foot forward. That's a lot of moving parts to then come out here and throw a sinker down and away. Little cheats that you can do. Okay, and some quarterback coaches are super into making sure that one foot is forward, the other foot is back. Some coaches could care less. I was always a guy who liked to move it around depending on the play. At a minimum, just go even here. I think you could help yourself by going left foot a little staggered forward just to be opened up to where you're throwing. You know, it's it's pretty rare to just have gun tunnel screen where you can cheat your feet like this, but this makes it unnecessarily difficult. And again, just watch the lower half. See how much he's got to twist all the way around. He's got somebody right in his lane. Just, it's not an easy throw. Now, it doesn't matter that it's not an easy throw. You can't throw that type of ball out there. I don't care if it's a downpour. You've got to be able to give us a better ball or else we can't call that. You know, if they had to do it over again, they'd probably just run it. Kick the field goal, take the lead. Last one here. It's third and two. Ball's on the 30. Four-minute offense, fourth quarter, up three. This is one of those ones I really thought Tommy could hit and get us a first down here and help ice this game. This, to me, is an iteration of like thumbs, I'm used to calling it, or it's really railroad return. It's supposed to look like mesh. I think there are multiple people here available for easy first down throws. Okay, easy with a marker and a clicker. But man, this is one of those ones when you watch it on the film, you're going to be like, golly, we had opportunities here. So what is it supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like what I'm used to calling rail. So there's the rail. We're going to run mesh here. And then we're going to run that deep hook, and probably something to the outer the corner down here, which is not really an option. What it is, though, is that we're going to keep the rail on. So the rail is there. And then these mesh runners are going to come in, and then they're going to come back out. They're going to come in and come back out, and I'll clean it up for us, and we're going to keep the deep hook. So instead of running that mesh where they actually cross here, they're trying to sell that, come in and then back out, come in and then back out. And so it looks like you put your fit, make a fist, put your pinkies together, and have your thumbs coming out. And then you have that deep hook over the ball. And I think if he had to do this over again, he would realize this throw right there, that's first down. The deep hook, it's a first down. Now, they're kind of in the same spacing. Don't love the spacing, but they're both easy first down throws. And the pass protection is good enough. So I really like this call. If I'm going to kind of come after certain calls, I'm going to point out the ones that I like. Multiple runaway opportunities here with these whips or returns coming out. And again, just raise up and put it on three down here. He's there. You're looking right at him. You got to be able to see that. You have to be able to see that. And if you can't see it, you got to slide, move, and find the lane. You can't take that sack. Just cannot. And I think he's a good enough player, and he's certainly thrown, shown the ability to make these plays down the field, that a couple of these plays from within the pocket, you're just kind of surprised that he doesn't see right here. Now, maybe the guard, left guard and center are in his way right there, but you got to know where those guys are. Shuffle and move. And again, you can see the spacing on the top left. That's not my favorite spacing, but they're both open. Shuffle, move, keep your eyes downfield, and get a first down. Dang. So that is a wrap. Tommy DeVito, the Giants. What a cool story on so many different levels. I was really impressed. I hadn't watched him play at all. I thought he made some really nice plays down the field, some pocket movement, just super impressive plays. Now, was it consistent? No. It looked like we were dealing with significant weather as well. It doesn't make anything easier as far as throwing the ball. And, okay, when you turn on the film, and you expect this from anyone, but especially from a younger guy in the league who's getting his first opportunity to play, there were some opportunities to play within the structure of the plays, the concept that looked like he was looking right where he was supposed to be looking, and for whatever reason, we didn't throw it. So those types of things need to be cleaned up immediately. But man, what an awesome story. What a great kind of couple clips where huge, massive throws down the field. So fired up for him. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.